Hi and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. Now, why do swords feel heavy? Because the truth is, they're not heavy by any means. So movies would have you believe that swords throughout most years, and especially European swords, are some hulking iron bars that are swung around like they're, you know, caveman clubs. So, are swords heavy? No. Um, and then why do they feel heavy? So first of all, we've got to look at what do actually swords weigh as a kind of brief overview. In the last couple of days, I've done this fun piece of artwork that compared a range of uh, swords, especially I started off with 18th and 19th century swords, comparing them to firearms and, and you know, basically to pistols for the most part. And then I expanded it and included different swords from different periods so that people could get a, a more of an overview as to how common swords compared to more recent, basically, firearms. And it's, it's, a, it's a comparison that I think a lot of people uh, thought was quite interesting and put it into perspective for them. So, if you look at the diagram, you can see the range of swords. So it starts there at kind of 400 grams of the small sword and the dagger, and it goes through things like infantry sabers, cavalry sabers, you know, the heavy cav, which is a very famous heavy sword, uh, and rapiers, and onto long swords and two-handers, and you get down to sort of that three and a half kilo range, which is actually where swords tend to top out. Now, there are swords that are heavier than three and a half kilos, but that's actually really, really rare. So some, uh, that would be the real exception to the rule. Most swords do cap out at around three and a half kilos, and the ones that are that weight are massive, as in man-sized swords. Now, as a kind of average sword over time, this is a little 1.25 kilo weight, cast iron weight, and this is about the average of a sword. If you just took at swords, you know, throughout much of history and just took some kind of average, you would end up around about 1.25 kilos. So, for an example, a lot of cavalry swords are around about this weight. Uh, the katanas are often around this weight, Viking swords, medieval sort of arming swords, you know, single-handed sort of knightly cruciform swords, around about the same. Basket-hilted swords, roughly around the same. So a lot of swords are around this 1.2 kilo range. Of course, things that are two-handed are normally a bit heavier, and some one-handers are a bit lighter, and there is a bit more of a spectrum, as you can see on the diagram. But as a very rough average, 1.2 kilos. Now, anybody that does actually lift weights will look at this and just laugh. You know, 1.25 kilos. It's pathetic. It's a tiny, tiny adjustment weight. It's nothing at all. So, why then, when some people pick up swords, do they think they feel heavy? Um, and as I said, some of it is down to popular culture, is that you've, you know, you've been basically taught to think that swords are heavy. But even so, when people do pick up um, either antiques or high-end reproductions that are accurate representations of those swords, why do they then think, oh, that feels heavy? Because that's actually fairly common. Not always, there are exceptions to the rule. Sometimes people go, oh, well, they're actually really, really light. But so often, the response is, damn, that's heavy. So why? Because, as a good comparison, this is a sword that is famously known to be heavy, and excessively heavy. So this is the 1796 Heavy Cavalry Trooper's Sword, famously used by um, Richard Sharp in the Bernard Cornwall novels and Sean Bean movies. And again, this is an antique original from that period, from the uh, Napoleonic era, and it weighs just over one kilo. It's about 1,040 grams. So this sword, which is famously heavy and famously unwieldy, actually, uh, uh, at least in modern, modern sort of perspectives, why does this feel heavy when this little 1.25 kilo weight is a good deal heavier? Why do then people think this is incredibly heavy? Well, the truth is, is that there's a lot more to it than just total weight. The things that you've really got to consider as to why or how a sword feel heavy are to do with its balance point. So the balance point is where the sword balances here. That's the, the, the basically the balance of the sword, which on this particular sword is, uh, I believe it's 15 centimeters, maybe 16 centimeters, which is fairly far forward. And that gives you an idea as to why people think this sword is heavy. So that's the point of balance, which is important to understand how a sword handles. But what is actually more significant is the mass distribution, because the mass distribution can create balance in different ways. So you can have a sword that is one kilo, 1.5 kilo, whatever, that balances close to the hand or balances close to the tip and is going to feel very different as a result. So a 16 centimeter balance is quite far forward and you're normally only going to see that on quite cut heavy swords like this heavy cavalry sword, like the 1796 light cavalry sabre, which of course is um, 
a very famous choppy <laughs> heavy cutting sword. So all the swords I'm showing you on this video are all antique original examples. And uh, so yeah, like cavalry swords, they're normally around about the 900 gram range, ranging up to the max, up to about a kilo. And some officers' examples can actually drop down as low as sort of 750 uh, grams or even less sometimes. But uh, yeah, normally around the 900 gram range, these feel even more heavy than these. Despite the fact that everybody that knows anything about swords, rave, well, most people rave about the light cavalry saber as if it's some kind of legendary katana equivalent sword in the European sword world. They do rave about it and they all laugh about this one saying this is a dog that you know, is like a crowbar, it handles terribly, it's too heavy, it's unwieldy. The truth is, um, if I had to fight on foot, I would choose this one. And for most examples on, on horseback, I would also choose this one. It's, it's basically, it's been misunderstood massively by predominantly sword collectors and then perpetuated by people who've not handled them and don't use swords. Now, why would I choose this one? It's not just about the hand protection, although that is appreciated, is that additional hilt weight does bring the balance a bit further back. So this one's a 16 centimeter balance and this one is a 19 centimeter balance. Um, it's not just the hilt weight, it's also the, uh, the flared blade does add a little bit of mass compared to this, which doesn't actually flare at the tip, although it's a little bit longer. So it's got a couple of inches on the light cav, and yet it handles closer, it balances closer to the hand, so it doesn't feel as heavy in the hand, despite the fact that it is over 100 grams heavier and a bit larger as well. So that gives you some idea as to why a sword might feel heavy. It's all to do with leverage. It's basically that mass that you've got. Where is the mass and how far from the hand is it? Because if you put all the mass around the hand, it won't feel like a very heavy sword. In fact, the blade will feel quite airy and quite light in the hand if you've got a lot of mass here. So you can even have a fairly heavy blade, but if you counterbalance with a basically a big pommel, for example, which say a lot of medieval swords would have big sort of disc pommels, or a basket hilt, for example, which does, you know, much the same thing. So um, this is a, an English back sword from the early 17th century. You might look at that pommel and think that's the counterbalance, but it isn't. That's hollow. They were made in two parts and braced together. So that is purely a fashion item, that big, big globular pommel that was typical around 1600. But it's a hollow pommel. It doesn't add that much weight. But the basket does add a fair bit because, you know, there's a fair bit of mass in that. And this actually is a light basket. And, and this sword actually weighs just under one kilo. It's 977 grams. <clears throat> So, it's a fraction lighter than this heavy calf, known to be, again, in modern circles, a bit of a dog and a bit excessive in its weight. This is almost the same, in fraction, a whisker lighter, and yet, if you've got this one in hand, you will go, oh, this feels really light, it's like a spadroon. In fact, it is a lot like a spadroon, because it's a light back sword blade of about that length, and yes, it feels very spadroony. So, this one balances at around 10 centimeters, because, again, the blade is not excessively heavy, and the hilt has a fair bit of mass in it. When you balance a sword to around about 10 centimeters, it feels fast because you haven't got that mass working against you as, as leverage. Because again, if you put all the mass in the tip, like for example, if you looked at um, a fairly heavy ax, like a fire ax, for example, a workman's ax, or a, a mace, for example, that's designed to you know bash, bash into armor and, and, and basically uh, do damage through the armor, they feel heavy even though that usually their total weight is not massive, but the mass is all the way in the tip, so you're fighting that leverage. Whereas, and obviously they hit hard as a result. Of course, the more mass you put in the tip, harder it actually is going to hit. But in terms of how it handles, the further the mass is from the hand, the basically more clumsy it's going to feel. The more mass you put in the guard or the pommel, the more you get to counterbalance that. And there are more ways that it can be done than just a pommel or blade uh, width or guard. There are more ways that it can be done than just that to give either a very blade heavy or a very hilt heavy sword. So here is the 1804 Navy Cutlass. So this is one of the most famous cutlasses used in, in history. It's, certainly, it's a British example, of course, but very famously used. And um, of course, it's not curved and it doesn't look like a pirate sword, but it is, in fact, uh, the Royal Navy Cutlass of, of the Napoleonic period. And it's heavy for its size. It's, it's 1.1 kilos, so it's, it's heavier than the heavy cavalry sword that everybody calls heavy. And yet it's a little sword. Tiny little sword, really. 29-inch blade is small. Not as small as some cutlasses, but it's small. 
So this one also balances close to the hand with a balance of around about 11 centimeters, despite the fact that it's a really heavy sword and does not have a huge guard. So it's got this figure of eight guard, which is made from thin uh, metal. So that doesn't add a lot of weight. What actually adds weight on this one is the cast iron grip. So this is, yeah, this grip is cast iron and obviously that adds a lot of counterbalance just in the way that a large pommel would. But there's also more to it than that, than just that as well. So with your blade, in the 18th and 19th century, it's really common to see blades that have very little what we would call a profile taper. So the profile taper is the width here down to the width here. So when you look at a, a sword in profile, that's why we call it profile taper, often in a book, for example, if you get a coffee table book on swords and swordsmanship, you will see swords usually photographed like this. And as a result, a sword like this and like the heavy cav and like the light cav, they look heavy because they're very wide. But actually, there are ways you can change the blade mass in more ways than just say starting thick here and going thin here because yes yeah, some swords do so a lot of rapiers actually are, are, are fairly wide here a lot of long swords are fairly wide here and they taper down to quite a point not all but lots do but these 18th and 19th century swords how do they sort out that mass because if it had a fair bit of mass here and it was this wide it would handle like an absolute dog well the answer is distal taper so profile taper is the width of this down to this. Distal taper is the thickness from here to here. And this is the thing that's not obvious when you look at swords in photographs and in books. It's really not obvious at all. So this cutlass is almost, it's almost a centimeter thick, okay, at what we would call the shoulder. So the blade is almost a centimeter thick, and yet it goes down to little over one millimeter down at the tip. So, uh, and it's not, it's, it's not a, it is actually a, a complex distal taper, so it starts very thick, it thins quite quickly, and then it continues to thin at a more even rate. So it, it's, it's not um, the same, basically, distal taper all the way along. It's complex distal taper. But anyway, you can see what's been done here is a lot of mass has been taken out of the tip, and yet the, the strong part of the blade where you're going to take your parries and where you want it to be uh, resilient and strong and also not to wobble too much and things like that, it's all really, really strong and robust here, and is also providing some counterbalance to the blade because it still is fairly hefty. And you can see that's how it's been done, is distal taper has been used to ensure that this blade isn't unwieldy. And then the cast iron grip has also provided more weight to counterbalance it. And the end result is this cutlass has the balance point of a typical spadroon which is kind of hilarious when the spadroon is the really light cut and thrust sword and this cutlass is known to be a bit of a beast and yet the balance is exactly the same. So you can see there that why does a sword necessarily feel heavy? Well, this is a heavy sword for its size, doesn't feel heavy because the balance is back and significantly the mass distribution is mostly around here because of that complex distal taper and because of the cast iron grip. So those are ways that it has been made to feel relatively agile despite its weight. Now, on the other hand, if you get a sword that doesn't have much distal taper, so if we look at this um, foot artillery hanger, so this is a British Napoleonic era foot artillery uh, um, gunner's sword, and it has very little distal taper. So again, it's like nine millimeters here, and if you look, it barely has any distal taper until it gets to here. It's, 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 it's a tiny, tiny amount, so that spine is outrageously thick. And what that means is, is that whilst this sword might in profile look a bit like that cutlass I just showed you, it handles nothing like it. It also doesn't have the cast iron grip, so it doesn't have the cast iron grip to balance it, and it doesn't have much distal taper. So what I said about the cutlass, where are balancing around 11 centimeters, well this balances around 20 centimeters. So this balances like the light cavalry saber which is crazy for its size because it's, it's a small sword. It's a very small sword with a very small guard. So you can make a blade using distal taper or profile taper or hilt weight or pommel weight, so guard weight or pommel weight, and even grip weight in some examples. You can make them handle either very choppy and therefore people will pick them up and say that feels heavy or you can balance them all the way down into the hilt by different methods of mass distribution. And then most people will think they feel comparatively light. 
So a one kilo sword, this is around about one kilo by the way, it's, it's almost as heavy as the cutlass. A one kilo sword that has a lot of mass towards the tip will feel heavy, but a one kilo sword that balances mostly in the hilt, like that back sword, will not. It will feel light and agile. So the truth is with swords is that swords predominantly are not heavy. Even the unusually heavy examples are not very heavy compared to the real world objects that you just experience every day. Swords are not heavy. They are in fact light and agile, but they can feel heavy depending on how you distribute the mass depending on the blade, both distal taper and profile taper. Length of course is a factor because the longer the blades, the more mass it's going to have anyway. And also the more curvature, the more curvature for equivalent blades, you've got to have more steel in to get the same length. But also the weight of everything that's in the hilt. So the grip, the guard, the pommel. So all these different factors. So ultimately balance it close to the hand through all those different methods of mass distribution, it will feel light. Balance it and have more mass in the tip, it's going to feel very, very heavy. And that's it. So that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope you learned a little bit. Swords are absolutely not heavy, heavy at all, they're a lot lighter than people think, but they can absolutely feel heavy for various reasons. Thanks for watching, I do hope you enjoyed the video and please do subscribe if you haven't already.